Hello everyone, Spirit here, and I'm doing this new little series called The Evolution of Gamers, and what I'm going to discuss is the variations of different gamers broken down into even smaller subsections themselves. And I'm going to try and release a video once, maybe every two weeks, to complete with the series. That way it just doesn't pile on you all at once. So the whole point of the series is sort of a discussion between me and you and how we evolve as a gamer. So this episode is going to be beginners. The beginners I've broken down into children, casuals, and observers. Now, we'll start with the children. For a beginner, I'd say a child beginner is age 3 to 8. They're still learning, they don't have hand-eye coordination, stuff may still be hard for them. As a beginner, as a child, it's going to be hard. I know I was natural at video games as a child. My parents always thought it was strange that I could complete Mario at the age of five and they're like well we need to get this kid more games <laughs> he does amazing and I the only game I couldn't beat them at was called anticipation and that whole game was meant for adults it was guessing and spelling out words I I, I was a kid I would have never known what these objects were what to call them or that and my parents thought, yeah, that game's too hard for a kid. And back then, there was no ESRB. There was no parental board. None of this M for mature, E for everyone. It was just, here's your game. Because everyone thought games were all family friendly. There, there was no Doom until a few years after I started getting my SNES. And that was about 1994. 495 that the ESRB started kicking in. But children beginning in games is great. It gives them activity. But at the same time, when we begin as a child and we just keep playing video games, we develop hand eye coordination, we develop mental thinking processes, reactions. We build basic motor functions through playing simple video games like platformers such as Mario Brothers or learning dungeon puzzle solving skills through The Legend of Zelda. And I played those games on the NES and it did increase my skill in mental function and in hand-eye coordination. But on top of it, I was moderated on the system and playing games on it to also having outdoor time to make friends, social, and being all around able to keep exercise going too. And this, this as a gamer is essential to us to be able to be able to be perfectly normal functioning with online games and not be some asshat online that no one likes, but you want people to like you but the only thing you do is make fun of people. No one wants wants to deal with that. So as a child, games will help develop skills for you. And on top of it, if you do it in moderation, not games, 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 but going outside, playing... The kids on the block, all of us would get together during summer for water gun fights, or we go play baseball. We do something and it was great for us. We got to interact outside of just, oh, I've got video games. We've got sports, we've got exercise, and it was amazing. So as a child, for a beginner, it's a quite acceptable, especially between the ages of three and eight, because you develop functioning skills that help you in the real world, and as you grow on through life, and I suppose that's where we all start. We all start as a beginner and as a child. We need to start from the ground up. 
So next we have casual gamers. I put these between ages of nine and older. You start. You've got your hand-eye coordination skills starting to get down, or you already have it in that, but you're not dedicated, or you're just starting to learn video games. I've known older people to learn video games, and it takes some time. But these casuals want to get in on it. They may not be the best, like pros and all that, but everyone has to start somewhere, even if it's at some point in time. And just through simple, okay, we'll play a simple game, and you'll learn, and you'll get better. And it's a great way to start them off. iOS games, phone games, Facebook games, Flash games online, even simple console games where it's, okay, this is how you do it, so on and so forth. And they learn. Casual gamers in the beginner stage aren't going to be the greatest. They're still going to learn. They still have a lot to learn. However, if you go into a veteran-style game, let's take an MMO or a first-person shooter, you're going to be ridiculed. However, you're still going to learn, but you're not going to like it as much. So sticking with simpler platformer games may be a best interest overall, because you're going to have to develop your skills if you're willing to sit and put up with all the stuff thrown at you all the names all that thrown at you you go for it why because if you're willing to learn and get better at whatever you do it won't make a difference what they say because you're doing something more than what they are doing you're learning and on top of it, you've probably made some friends willing to teach you, or you've had a friend introduce you and try and teach you how to get better, how to improve yourself, and become better casual player at the game, even though you're just starting. It's going to be tough, it's going to be hard, and being the casual of the group, you're not going to seem to be the wisest. But you'll be one of the most innovative in trying and the most dedicated to learning if you want to improve yourself. However, if you do not wish to improve yourself, that's up to you. I'm not going to tell you, yeah, you have to go improve yourself in order to play any video game. That's just basics of it. To get further or see all the content of a game, you usually have to dedicate yourself to to improve yourself however still being a casual you probably have work you probably have children you have school you have school projects exams you have other stuff in your life that is required of you to do in order to st sustain your life and ability to play games and unfortunately that's true for a lot of people out there including myself, I have to work, I work throughout the night, then when I get home, I get like an hour or two of gaming, sleep, wake up, game some more, go back to work. So, as a casual, it's actually in your best interest to keep up with your normal routine while supplementing in some video games while you're learning. Once you reach up and go further, then it'll you'll start getting better and learn more. And I call that phase the amateur phase. And that's what happens. You, you start, everyone starts as a beginner, as a casual. Especially if you haven't played a game as a child. So that's why it's the second one on this list that, okay, you're, you're going to be still learning and that's fine everyone has that phase and it's completely natural so our last one for this group is observers observers can be any age 
And what the observer does is sit and watch a game, just like you're doing now. You're watching me play Bit Chip Runner 2. And yes, right now you're observer and you're listening. And beginners, it's great for them to be able to see what the game is like, how difficult it's going to be, and how much time they have to put in it. I just bought this game today, and you're watching me play for my first time. It is rough and tough for me, but I do like the rhythm style of games. And it, it's great. I have never watched someone play it before, so I never knew how difficult or that it was. So it's pretty awesome. Now, as an observer, you could sit and watch someone from your living room, or in your bedroom, or their bedroom, uh, on YouTube, such as, videos such as Let's Plays, Walkthroughs, How To's, all that you're observing. The whole point of the observer is to learn and get accustomed to the game. It does not mean you're going to be perfect at the game right away. You're still learning what everything is and what it can do. And the best part about that is you get to gain knowledge. And when you walk into that game, you at least know what's going to happen, what's going to come at you, and what you can do. And if, if anyone says any different that, oh, observing is terrible, you will not learn anything from observing, they are wrong. They are 100% wrong. Anyone who observes can at least learn something. Let's take MMOs, for example, here. World of Warcraft, Fat Boss Guides. You learn how to fight bosses before entering in the boss. You know what they can do. Some people won't watch this because they like to have, okay, this is cool, this is the mechanic, I will adjust. Others would rather watch the video, okay, I know what's going to happen, I know what to do, let's just go, nothing bad's going to happen which is right about 75% of the time. The other 25%, someone in your group didn't watch the video, and something happened. The other thing, such as watching, let's take TF2 from Mr. Paladin, Optimus Prime, Stabby Stabby, myself, any TF2 player that makes videos, you're learning how their class operates and how they think. And by learning how they think, you can develop a style yourself. I learned and combined styles of Mr. Paladin and Optimus Prime. Sneaky, yet sticking tra traditional stabs instead of relying on trick stabs. And then playing in Highlander, I learned more about myself. Playing the game and the class, I learned more about myself too. This is my skill restriction right now. How can I push my level of skill? This is what I can and can't do. How do I do it? Where am I going wrong? Is there a video on how I can do this? And being an observer made me so much better at these games that it just becomes second nature. And once you start observing and looking what's going on around you, you become anything. You can do anything in the game. Not right of way, though. You still have to practice and master it. It's just like anything. You pick up a bike. You're not going to ride a bike right away. You start with the training wheels on. Then one training wheel comes off. Then the next. Then you're riding on two wheels. Next, you're riding with no hands on the two wheels. Then, finally, you're on a unicycle. You've got one wheel, no handles, and just a seat. And it takes time and years of practice. It's like watching the Olympics. And so, be being a beginner is not bad. Being a any one of these three subtypes is not bad. It's for you to start somewhere. And as an evolution to gaming, we all had to start from this primordial soup. So, again, this series will continue on once 
every two weeks. So expect a new video up in two weeks' time. And then our next section will be amateurs. So I hope you all enjoy this. And what you're watching now is me trying to take the difficult route. I am forcing myself to learn. Those red arrows mean difficult. And I love doing it. It was great. So I thank you all for watching. Don't forget to share this video. Subscribe. Leave a comment. Say something that you may agree or disagree with in this video. And I'd like to thank you all. Thank you for watching.